So let's talk about the preeminent algorithm in number theory, which is the Euclidean algorithm. This sort of gets the ball rolling on really being able to figure out stuff. And our book um, has a really nice visual presentation of this, uh, just about slicing up a rectangle into squares. And that captures uh, a lot of the heart of the algorithm in a very visual way. And so I can't improve too much on uh, their discussion, except that they kind of pretend in the, when they first present it that we don't uh, no, they don't kind of connect it to, the, to, to finding the greatest common divisor of two integers until the second section. And I want to go ahead and give that, give that away, um, talk about it in those terms. So we've got 150 and 66, and what, what would be a good way to find the greatest common divisor of those, those two? And the idea is you're just going to take, you're going to start with the bigger number, and you're going to take multiples of the second number out of it, and the thing is that that's not going to screw up anything you any any secret common divisor that those numbers have is still going to be in in the remainder. And then we're going to flip the roles and and continue. And so and it's really nice to see it visually. So and when I say take a bunch of copies of one number out of another number, subtract a bunch of copies, that's that's called division with remainder. Okay, especially if you take as many copies as you're allowed to take with a positive remainder. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide 66 into 150. Okay, well, 66 goes in once, certainly, but goes in twice, 132. Okay, and I'll put a little dotted line indicating there's two copies of that 66 going in the 150. Now, for more advanced applications of the Euclidean algorithm, we might want to actually pay attention to the quotient, but when you're just finding the GCD, you actually don't care too much. So this is going to be 2 times 66. Okay, that's 132. The remainder is 18. So it's just division, It's which is guaranteed by the division algorithm and the division theorem for integers. It's really important that that works. Okay. Um, so there's 18. Okay, so this side here is 18 long. And it's now a rectangle, the leftover. So I've got two squares, 66 by 66 squares, and then I've got an 18 by 66 rectangle. And the, the, the point, the arithmetic point here, is that if 150 and 66 have some sort of secret common divisor, which you probably know what it is already because I picked some small numbers, um, then 18 is going to share that divisor as well. Because 18 is just 150, I'll just write it this way, it's 150 minus 2 times 66. Okay. So any divisor that they share is going to be shared by 18, and 18 is a smaller number. This is progress. Okay. So now let's do it again. Okay. And here's the, the cool thing, uh, and it's embodied by the rectangle idea, is that we're going to switch the roles. Well, 66 is still something we haven't made as much use of as we could. We used it as the divisor into 150 and took multiples of, one fifth, of, of 66 away from 150. But what if we switch its role and make it the dividend? And, in other words, take as many 18 by 18 squares. Let's see. I think 18 should be really smaller to be more accurate. Okay. Let's take as many 18 by 18 squares as we can out of that 66. And I know they don't look like squares, but they're supposed to be squares. Try to imagine that they're squares. So these are all um, 18s. I should have measured it out. I guess. Okay. So that's 3 times 18, so that's 54, plus 12. Okay, so there's a 12 left over. Okay, and this is still an 18, so that's an 18 by 12 rectangle. Okay, so now it's still true. All we're doing is we're taking the original ingredients, the 150 and 66, and playing them off against each other, but in a clever way. Now we've taken that 12 is 66 minus 3 times 18. If that has a common factor with 66, with 18, if 18 had a common factor with 66, which is whatever is going to include whatever common factor that 115 and 66 have together, 12 is going to have that common factor as well. Okay, and we're closing in on exactly what that common factor is. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take reverse roles one more time, and so notice what happens is that this guy just shifts over to here, this guy just shifts over here. And this guy shifts over here, and this guy shifts. So it's this pretty predictable thing in terms of how you write it. 18, we're going to divide that by 12. Well, that's 1 uh, times 12 plus 6. Okay. So we're going to take this rectangle, and we're going to divide it up into 
here's a 12 by 12 square, and then here's a 6 by 12 rectangle. Okay, getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but that number, that 6, is going to have a common factor with all the other, all these other, other ones. It's going to share whatever common factor that they share, let's say that. Okay, now one more time, 12, and the, now the question is, how do we know when we're done? Is this just going to evaporate? Well, it can't really evaporate. They've all got to share a common factor, and unless the common factor is only one, which this could be leading to in some cases, we're, it's probably going to, going to stop at some point. And here's where it's going to stop. 12 is 2 times 6 plus 0. Aha, we've divided without remainder. Okay, so that says, hey, this 12 by 6 rectangle, that divides into squares with nothing left over, and then I get to stop. If my goal was to divide a rectangle into squares, then I'm clearly done. I've got a rectangle divided into square, square. I know these don't look square, square, and two, these two smallest squares. But really, our goal is to find the GCD. How is this helping? Okay, well, again, this number, we know that that shares whatever mystery common factor the 12 and 18 share. That shared whatever common factor that 18 and 66 shared. That shared whatever common factor that 66 and 150 shared. So whatever common factors, including the biggest one, the greatest common factor, greatest common divisor, that 66 and 150 share, it must be a divisor of 6. Okay, But is it smaller than 6? Well, so now I'm getting down to 12 and 6, and I divide 12 by 6, and there's no remainder. Okay, So now what's the mystery greatest common factor of 12 and 6, of a number and a number that divides it. Let's think about that. What's the biggest number that could divide 6 and a multiple of 6? Well, it's certainly going to be, 6 is going to divide 6, and it's going to divide any multiple of 6, and they can't be any bigger. So that's just going to be 6. And so this signal, and this is, you're going to see this coming, unless the numbers are really big, and you get really lucky to get perfect division when the numbers are still really big. Um, you're going to see this coming a mile away, pretty much, but this is the irrefutable symbol that you are done with this process. You have finished this process, whether you think of it as com di um, dividing rectangles into squares or finding a GCD, this says that 12 actually did got divided exactly by 6. That means that when that was in that remainder slot, really, it was you were pretty much all already done. You were staring at the GCD, you just don't know it yet. Like here, I'm not staring at the GCD here, that remainder, I'm not staring at the GCD here, because when I divide, there's still some remainder left over. But when I go to the next step and I get zero, that tells me, aha, what I was just looking at in the divisors in that remainder slot was, in fact, the greatest common divisor of those numbers. So that's just another example and another presentation of why this is a way to get the greatest common divisor.